Hello everyone, this is Florian and in today's video I will show you how to generate file reports using nothing else but Python standard library. Pretty often I find myself in the situation that I need to generate certain reports, output files or manipulate strings. All of these situations have in common that the report generation or string manipulation follows a certain pattern. Usually these patterns are so similar that you wish to have a template you can reuse and fill in the data you currently have. Fortunately, Python provides a class which can help us, string.template. But before we have a look at a practical example, let me share you the motivation behind using string.template instead of third-party libraries like Ginger2 or Mako first. In essence, there are three main advantages of using string.template over third-party solutions. So first of all, there are no additional dependencies needed. It works out of the box with the standard Python installation, so no pip install is required. Secondly, it is lightweight. Of course, template engines like Ginger2 or Mako are widely used and even provide a certain amount of logic within the templates. However, in the scenarios described in this video, these capabilities are simply overkill. Last but not least, separation of concerns. Instead of embedding string manipulations and report generations directly in your code, a template file can be used to move that to an external place. This allows you to exchange the template file instead of touching your code if you want to change the report's structure or design. Without further introduction, let's start with the practical example. Suppose you're working in a company creating annual reports about the best books published in the past year. This year is special because in addition to your annual report, you publish a list of best books ever written. Your input looks like this. So I have here a data.json file and in it, you can see that we have a mapping where the key is essentially the author of a certain book and the value is the title of the book. At this point, we don't care about where the data come from or which books are part of this list. Um, but your task is now to visualize this list of books in a certain way so that you are able to share it with others. Um, for example, large magazines, companies or bloggers. The company decided that a simple HTML table format would be sufficient. So our task now is to create this HTML table automatically. So we don't need to do this task next time again. So usually you would start by creating your template first. I already done that. So here in my working directory, there is a template.html. Let's have a look at it. Uh, as you can see, this is just a plain HTML file. Um, what's uh, important to note, so we have here all uh, over here a title. Um, we also defined a viewport so that it is responsive and Bootstrap is imported here as well, so that we have nice styling out of the box and don't need to care that much about the design in this video. And the rest of the file is pretty straightforward. So we have um, a title, great books of all time. And then we have a table. The, the table headers are already included, but the data is still missing. And notice that within the T-body element over here, where is it here, over here, T-body, um, we don't have actual table rows, but instead we have a placeholder over here with this dollar sign elements. This is used to mark the point where we will inject the list of books later on. Perfect, we are all set to implement our Python script generating the final table. Therefore, we create a new Python file called report.py in our current working directory. So touch report.py and open it in Visual Studio Code. And let's make this a little bit bigger. First, we need to import two built-in modules we will need. So this is the JSON module, which we need in order to load the data from the data.json file. And secondly, the string module, which contains the template class that we are using in order to generate our final table. The next thing that we are going to do is to load the data from the data.json file. So with open data.json, so it's in the very same directory as this file, sf, and we store it in the local variable data. So data equals to json dot 
loads f.read. So what we're doing here, so f is our file object and it has a read method which reads in the whole content of the file and the return string is passed to the json.loads function which turns it into a proper Python dictionary. So now we have a dictionary called data where the keys are the author's names and the values are the book titles. The task that we are now facing is to create a giant string representing the HTML table so that we can place it into the template and replace the placeholder with it. So therefore we need a for loop. So first create a empty um, string and now we loop over every entry inside of the dictionary. So for index comma author comma title in enumerate data. So data, if we enumerate over data dot items, we get tuples back where the first element is the author and the second element is the title. And as we are passing this um, data dot items result to the built in enumerate function, we get a tuple containing first the index and secondly a tuple containing author and title. That's why we use this syntax over here. All right, so now we need to decide what we're going to do with each entry inside of the data.json file or the previous data.json file. So first our content is extended by a new HTML TR tag marking a new table row and so that we don't forget it we are also add the closing tag tr so what's inside of this tr tag so uh, essentially we have three columns in our html table first the idea so that we have a an ongoing numeration so content plus equals and now let's go with an f string so um, we have a new td tag and inside of it we have e plus one that's because uh, i explicitly write uh, i plus one so that we're not starting with a zero but with a one we could also um pass a value over here um with a different start for the enumerate function but I'd, i like to go with um zero by default over here and then simply write this plus one over here so we can also close this td tag um, the next column is the author so td and there we go with author um, closing tag and last but not least the title Great, we created the final HTML table in our code. In the next step, we need to load the template file I showed you earlier. And we do that by opening it with the built-in open function. So open template.html as t and start in the local variable template. So template equals to string template and now f.read. So what's happening here? First, we are reading in the whole content of the file with f.read. This returns a string and this string is then passed over to string.template, meaning that we are now generating a new template object. This one is stored in the local template variable and now we can further process it. So the last step that we are now need to do is to replace the placeholder inside of the template with a string representing the HTML table we just generated. So we can do that by utilizing the template substitute method. So template.substitute. And now we need to explicitly say which placeholder we want to replace. So um, the template has a elements placeholder in it, if you remember. And we want to replace this elements placeholder with our content. And I want to store this one in a local variable called final output. 
And the last thing that we need to do is to write this final output to a file so that we can share the HTML file with others. So with open, and let's call the file report.html, open it up in write mode as output file. And now we can say something like output file.write. And we want to write to the final output. All right. That's everything that we need to do. Now we can run the script. So Python report.py name i is not defined. Oh yeah, I called it idx. Run the script again. I O operation on closed file. Oh, uh, there is probably a, oh yeah, it's not F, it's T. Run the script again. Everything works right now. If we have a look at our working directory, there is a new file called report.html that was just generated. And if we open it, open report.html, then we can see that we now have a nice HTML table where the first column is just the index, the second one is the author's name, and the last one is the book title the author wrote. All right, so before we are closing this video for now, I want to share with you a common situation plus its solution before we're closing this, and this is safe substitution. What, what does that mean? Um, if you remember here, we have this template.substitute call, and if we don't pass a value for the elements placeholder inside of the um, template, key errors thrown. So the substitute method tries to replace every placeholder within the template. If it can't do it because you haven't supplied a certain value for a placeholder, then a key or error is thrown. To prevent that, because sometimes no, not all every data is needed, um, you can use safe substitute instead. Safe in this context means that Python tries to return a valid string in every case. So let's say that we are leaving this out. And as you can see, no error was thrown. And if we go over to the browser again, reload it, then you can see that we still have the title, but over here there is this weird placeholder because it hasn't been replaced. So now change it back and pass in a value for the elements placeholder so that we have a nice looking HTML table again, run the script again. And if we reload the browser, we can see the HTML table again. All right, that's all for today. Let me know what you are using this approach for. Stay curious and keep coding.